Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and the line between game and game development has been blurring more and more and more every year. One of the first things I can really think of in this space was Second Life. Second Life enabled you to create your own experiences. Uh, you could sell them to other people. You could own, buy, and sell virtual land, create your own experiences, etc. It's still going strong, and I have still never once in my life played Second Life. Another one that definitely comes to mind in this space is Roblox. Now, Roblox is a billion-dollar-plus platform. There are all kinds of people making serious bank on Roblox right now. So Roblox kind of used to be like a, a programmable Minecraft that just developed way beyond that. Now, basically, it is a game creation platform. And as you can see from the stats here, 2.8 million developers, 6 million active experiences, 18.7 billion engagement hours, 85.3 million users daily. So Roblox is definitely a sensation onto itself. And there is one other big player in this space I could think of, and that would, of course, be UEFN. This is Fortnite being turned into a game creation kit where you can actually create and sell your creations and make money. All three of the ones I mentioned so far, you can actually sell your own creations and make money with them. And that is, again, where the line between a game player and a game developer really gets blurry. Because a lot of times you think of what makes a pro... Well, a lot of times the answer there is a paycheck. You can definitely be a pro uh, Roblox or UEFN developer. I assume same thing with Second Life. Well, the next one we're going to get into was kind of in the same area. And it was a program called Gary's Mod. Now, Gary's Mod started off life as like a fun-to-play physics sandbox that ran on top of the uh, Source Engine, uh, the Valve's tools. It used all of their content, allowed you to create your own creations, share those with other people. Uh, it was actually published by Valve and allowed people to do like mostly like you could sort of make games or that you could make um, movies etc and people shared their work with other communities etc but the studio behind this face punch was always kind of I think disappointed that people couldn't publish and sell their own creations and that's where we move on to today's entry and it is something called Sandbox now Sandbox is the spiritual successor to Gary's Mod now Gary's Mod was not a game engine but Sandbox is sort of it's half of a game engine, half of a game. So that whole just go in and play, play with other people's uh, experiences, etc. that part is all there as well. And on top of that, there are a number of tools in here for creating your own game. And the key part is eventually you're actually going to be able to publish your own game. So you could put them up onto, say, Steam for sale. So it is a game engine, but it's also a game creation environment like Gary's Mod was. So Sandbox is not going to be Gary's Mod 2. It'll eclipse what is possible in Gary's Mod rather than simply be a modern version of it. We are taking Source 2, Source being, of course, the game engine behind Half-Life 2 and various other games created inside of Valve uh, and a couple of other external studios. Um, also, Gary's Mod, Unity, Unreal Engine, and we're trying to create an intuitive, modern-feeling game development environment where everything is moddable. Like Rust and Gary's Mod, we see this as a long-term thing. We intend to eventually make our own games using it. It is something for us to work on and improve every day for the next couple of decades. So, key features. You can play games. So, there's hundreds of community-created games spanning many genres, including shooters, platformers, puzzles, racers, and more. Party with your friends, main menu, and start playing any game together. No installing or subscribing to games or add-ons. Just click and play. Uh, you can create your games, obviously, with it. It is a full-blown game editor. You might be wondering, okay, well, what about programming? Well, the programming is using the C Sharp API. So you use C Sharp programming language. If you do not like the idea of using C Sharp, though, there is a blueprints like solution. We will see that in just a second. So you can create your own games and test them instantly with their very familiar scene system. Um, so again, C Sharp API for advanced users there. Share your games out. So sharing your games is easy. Click to publish and everything is uploaded to their back end automatically, ready to play right away. Multiplayer is built into the engine. You can test your games or levels straight away with the community. And it has hot reload, which is a very specific developer feature. Basically, you can change the code on the fly. And as you are changing the code, it will reload in, uh, take effect in your game immediately. No need for a compilation and link cycle or to restart your game. On top of that, there are a number of cloud assets. So you can build off of what others in the community have sent up there, stuff that Facepunch have provided and so on. Uh, and I assume you'll have the ability to have your own assets as well. Now, one of the areas we don't know about this particular thing is how it is going to be monetized. Is there going to be a set fee to use Sandbox or is it going to be DLC driven where you're paying for this type of content? And it leans, it sounds like more and more like that. That is how they're going to monetize it. But that is not known for sure. And one of the key things 
things about this is it actually has Hammer, uh, which is Valve's uh, Source Engine's world editing tool. It is built directly in. It is also moddable, so you can add new functionality, UI, primitives, and more in it. There is a terrain system as well, and as I mentioned earlier on, there is a visual scripting language called Action Graft, which can be used to create interactive experiences in your level without having to write a single line of code or having sprawling chains of entities. Although you're still writing code, you're just not typing. Uh, and I've got a shader graph for creating unique materials, uh, VR support in there as well. And again, one of the big things that they've got, and they don't actually mention it here, is that they want to support the ability to actually have people create finished, full, complete games, including, as they stated here, they want to be able to use this tool to create their own game. So how do you go about getting Sandbox? Well, what you do is you click Get It Now, and you log into Steam. So it's now available for everyone. It used to be based on a key uh, invite, uh, like basically uh, someone had to invite you in. Now, basically, you just come here, log in, and join the developer preview, and then you will find it up on Steam. Now, I'm not going to do a whole lot of hands-on with Sandbox today uh, for one simple reason. It crashes a lot. <laughs> it crashes a whole lot. So I'm going to demonstrate this until it crashes, which will probably be fairly quick. So when you load it up, you've got three different options. You can play Sandbox, which is the uh, game side of the experience. This is the closest thing you're going to find to Gary's Mod. Now, this being a game development channel, I'm instead going to pick option number two, which is the Sandbox Editor, where you would create your own game experiences. Or you can launch Sandbox in VR mode. Uh, if you have a virtual reality headset enabled. And now Sandbox is going to fire off. You do have this launcher. Uh, you got links to uh, documentation, the wiki, etc. the folder that everything is installed in. I have a demo project open up here. Let's go ahead and we'll load that in. You'll notice there's a Sandbox project created, but there's also a Microsoft Visual Studio solution in there as well. But we'll go ahead and launch that guy, and we hopefully will not crash. Now, one thing I have found is that it is getting updates near constantly. So every time I do a Steam update, it seems like Sandbox is one of them. Uh, this is one of those things I will probably come back to at some point in the future and take a look at it uh, when it's a, a little bit more stable. But you can see the basic editor environment. So this is a simple demo game. Yeah, it's got physics. There is a box in this world right here. This box has a physics collider attached to it, and it has a script called Cube Controller. This is literally a C Sharp script. So I should be able to, yeah, right here, I can open that one up, and you will see it is straightforward C Sharp. Again, they also have their visual scripting language. I forget the name of it already. But here you can see an example of what the scripting looks like. And it is pretty straightforward. It's a series of callbacks. So you've got things like update. Well, the on update is the only update here. Uh, but you basically, in your callback code, uh, this will be called once per frame. And what they're doing is basically moving it around uh, based off of the input uh, direction handled, and then boom, and update it. So again, if you have done any C-sharp game coding, this should probably be immediately comfortable to you. And that is basically the gist of it. You write these, uh, these C-sharp scripts to control things. Uh, this simple example, you can uh, play it right here. So uh, I forget which one I want. I'll go ahead and play it. And here you see, boom, physics in the world very straightforward. So that is uh, kind of the outside look at the editor. Uh, there are uh, a number of things available. So over here, you can see the various different uh, uh, models and maps and such. You can filter down by the particular type that you want and search for something. So for example, if I need an AK-47, I can create an AK-47. It will drop it into the world. I don't know where that actually created it. Uh, let's try that again. So let's create there. All right. So there is our AK-47. Uh, we can then apply components to said AK. So you're going to notice a number of different options over here. This is how I crashed it last time. So I am not going to click into something, uh, but you can also create your own new component here. This is how you could attach a C sharp script to something. But if I want to add an audio component to this guy, uh, a, say, um, a sound point or a sound box, boom, you apply it in. There is a box now attached to your component. Again, component-based engine, add multiple different components in here. Uh, so there's the old school particle system. Here's a new school particle system, uh, box emitter, boom. So there is a box particle emitter now attached to our object as well. Your world hierarchy is available over here. You're gonna notice you have a number of different tools that are sort of embedded in. This one is for creating materials visually. Uh, we have an animation editor in here, particle editor, 
Uh, and then the shader tools available here as well. The other thing that you will notice is the hammer editor, the tools world editor. So this is uh, the thing from the source engine itself for editing 3D worlds. Uh, it is fully included. Uh, you see right here. So if you want to create your maps using Hammer, you can. One cool thing with Hammer is it always had really good white boxing support. So you can create your 3D worlds using Hammer, load them into your world over here. And that, in a nutshell, is Sandbox as it exists right now. So if you go ahead and check this guy out, you will once again notice it crashes a fair bit. So it seems to be early-ish on. Again, this has been in development for, I think, eight years now. Uh, and it's actually switched the underlying game engines a couple times. I do believe it was being built in Unity for a while, and then they switched back to using the Source engine. Uh, so that, ladies and gentlemen, is the sandbox. Again, is it a game? Is it a game engine? It really blurs the line between them. Uh, I do think that, you know, once this takes off, um, it's going to be I don't know exactly how I would put it, probably closer to UEFN in the way that things work. It's kind of like think of it as um, a source engine powered UEFN instead of an Unreal Engine powered one. But it also has that game side, but then again, so does UEFN. So yeah, I think that's ultimately where Sandbox could end up here. I know some of the people on the Gary's Mod side of the equation, people that were, again, all about Gary's Mod, are potentially a little bit disappointed in Sandbox because it's more technical, more in-depth in what it does. Uh, but I think in the long run, it will definitely uh, pick up an audience behind it. But yeah, this is the spiritual successor, not the actual successor to Gary's Mod, but it is much, much more of a game engine. Uh, and again, if you want to go ahead and check it out, go here, click to get it now, log into your Steam account, and you should be able to download it uh, off of Steam from that point on. So let me know what you think of Sandbox. And if you checked it out yourself, are you experiencing a ton of crashes as well? I'd be interested to know. And also, are you excited about this? And do you like this merging between games and game engines? Or do you like really wish that the separation was getting more defined? Let me know. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.